大家好 ，I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王。Okay, today I'm going to talk to you about something that I just think is so fascinating. Hopefully, you'll think so too. It really has nothing to do with anything, but it's just the type of idea that floats around my strange head. All right, well, here we go. You probably already know I was raised to believe I had an endless amount of past lives, and not just as a human either. This fundamental belief is really hard to shake, actually, because we have no real known quantification of an afterlife. But the good news is, you don't have to believe that at all for this idea to make sense. Because I've been trying to reshape my ideas to be more normal for the last 20 years. My mind is always busy performing this kind of task. We know that information is passed along the generations. We see this play out in the animal world every day. Babies are born magically knowing what behaviors to take. Turtles crawl to the water, for example, with no parent to instruct them. There's an actual attraction to light built right into their DNA. I used to think a lot about dinosaurs when I was young. I loved them. They were so unreal, enormous creatures from another world almost. So many animals lived before us. It amazed me. At the time, the extinction of the dinosaurs was still a mystery, with several competing theories. I asked my mother how the ice age happened, and she told me a powerful spirit had torn a hole in the atmosphere. I believed this for a very long time, but it doesn't seem very likely to me anymore. Something always seemed important to me, though. When I looked around at my life, everyone focused on the now. Everything happening at the present day was the most important thing to them. I struggled to contextualize my life in relation to the vast time behind me. Did anything even matter if my existence was just a grain of sand on a beach of lives? You know, when you really take a quiet moment to think about the vastness of time behind us all, it can lead to interesting concepts. Imagine with me that you're an animal living nearly 50 million years ago. The Earth is lush and unkempt. It's wild, unrecognizable. There's an apex predator, one that has no natural predators itself. It eats you. Your cell memory or biological memory imparts some of the experience to your offspring. They reproduce and are eaten by the apex predator as well. Maybe it's the bear dog that eats you. Never heard of it? It was basically a huge dog, like almost 800 kg huge, 1,700 pounds. So you've transferred a tiny bit of knowledge down the line, and your children did too. Maybe the message "teeth are scary" or "dogs can hurt you." This continues. The shared experiences keep compounding. Each generation learns a little bit about this monstrous bear dog. That tiny amount of information couldn't really affect much, could it? Well, the thing is, this one example, the bear dog, illustrates the problem. They existed for about 40 million years. Basically, nothing else could kill them, and they were in North America, Europe, Asia, and Africa. Some animal almost no one has heard of was a dominant predator over nearly the entire globe for 40 million years. Just think about that. So this biological memory that's passed down. Not only is it compounding from you to your descendants, but also in many other animals. This bear dog probably lives on in the genetic memories of virtually every living land creature in existence today, in some way or another. Multiply that by the unimaginable amount of deaths since life started, and you start to get this interesting picture. Turtles can walk to the ocean. What other behaviors have been shaped by these genetic memories? How much of us is the result of this training, and how much is unique? Our jealousy, our rage, our hatred and kindness, our desire to be with our friends—we have all these things and more. But are any of them more than biological urges? Who are we if we reduce each other to only the differences between us? Is anything actually original? Anyway, I don't have a strong conclusion here. Just a question for us all: To what degree are we sentient? Sometimes, especially recently, I feel I'm kind of just moving on autopilot. How about you? Do you still feel real? Thanks, everybody. See you soon.